All right. In this video, I want to talk about Jacob with Leah and Rachel. Now, I listen to a lot of different people on the internet here, whether it's YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, or what have you. And uh, I got a lot of respect for these people because of their insight on the calendars and the feast days. And they're very excited looking for the return of Jesus. And they got this humility that they, they still love Jesus, but they see themselves as Leah and Israel as Rachel. And they're okay with that. And I admire that. But I don't get why they see the church as Leah and Israel as Rachel. I really don't. It doesn't make sense to me. And I'm going to explain why, and I'm going to share why I actually think it's the opposite. Right? So, first of all, with Leah, we have the woman who marries God first, which is Jacob representing Jesus, right? And she gives birth to Judah, who ends up bringing forth David and Solomon and eventually the Messiah, Jesus. So we can see that Leah represents Israel, a Mary who brings forth the Messiah, right? It seems to fit very well like that. Right. On the other side, we have Rachel, who brings forth Joseph, who is one of the greatest types of Jesus in the Old Testament, uh, up there with David. And he ends up being sold into slavery into Egypt, becomes second only to the Pharaoh, at which point he marries a Gentile woman, showing that the Messiah marries a Gentile. Right. And we see this in the book of Ruth, where Boaz marries Ruth, Ruth being a Gentile, right? Redeems her. And uh, we see this depiction uh, a bit in the Old Testament as well. Uh, we see, again, with uh, Abraham, with uh, Ishmael at first, right? Coming forth from Hagar. And Paul tells us that... Uh, these two children, Ishmael and Isaac, actually represent two covenants where we have Ishmael being Mount Sinai and Isaac representing uh, the new covenant by the spirit, the letter and the spirit, right? And not only that, at Mount Sinai, it was a marriage. What happened there was a marriage. They did marriage vows and they both said, I do, right? Jesus said, I'll be your God and you'll be my people. And the People like, you'll be our God and we'll be your people. They did an I do's, right? They did a marriage covenant. That's what that was. So we see that that at Mount Sinai, the covenant was with not the world, not the Gentiles, but with Israel. So Rachel, I, I mean Leah over here, fits Israel to a T, right? And you come over here to Rachel, we see that this is actually the second covenant, the second marriage. And she has a problem with what? Idols. She takes her father's idols. And what do you see with Christianity? They came from a Gentile world away from their fathers who were a bunch of idol worshippers. And they still take the idols. You see, a big chunk of Christianity is Catholicism in the Orthodox churches and other branch offs, branch offs from there that still use uh, you know, statues of Mary and the saints that are actually just brought over from their pagan idolatry. They just change the names of uh, the, the uh, gods that they worship to the names of the saints and to the queen of heaven to Mary. And then they uh, change like uh, Tammuz to Jesus, Mithra to Jesus and stuff like that. And then they use, you know, the idols of uh, the crucifix and stuff like that. So we see Christianity full of all these idols, right? That they took from their fathers. And they try to just mingle it in with the new religion, right? And we have over here the Old Covenant following the letter of the law, getting upset about why God loves this idolatrous church over here. Because this is what God wants. God didn't want the letter. He wanted the spirit. You see, he doesn't want us bound up as slaves to him by the letter. He wanted us free in the spirit to worship him in spirit and in truth, where there is no Jew or Gentile. He wanted everybody, right? That's what God wanted. And we actually see this a bit over here in Romans chapter 7. 
right? Where we see Israel married to God, and she's bound to the law of her husband, verses 1 through 6 here, right? And since the husband died, you know, Jesus, she is free from the law. So she's no longer bound to that old covenant. That marriage covenant is done, right? And now that he's dead, she can be free to marry another. And as it says here, excuse me, at verse 6, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. You see, God didn't want us to be in the letter of the law. He wanted us to be in the spirit of the law, right? So when we're actually in the letter of the law, we're selfish. We're thinking about ourselves and we're looking at ourselves and how good we are. And that's why you look at others like with jealousy and envy, right? And we see... Uh, uh, certain instances I like to give where the letter of the law will condemn you. If you were in Nazi Germany and you were protecting the Jews, so you lied to the Nazis about, yeah, I'm not hiding any Jews in my attic, in my basement, in the walls, or in the shed, or anywhere else. You know, I know nothing about no Jews, and if I saw some Jews, I'd kick them in the teeth, right? You, you lie and make it look like you hate Jews, right? Well, according to the letter of the law, you are a liar, a sinner, and you're condemned. If you were to protect your home from somebody who wanted to come in and rape and kill your wife and daughter, and you ended up killing the man to defend them, well, what, you just broke the letter of the law, right? You killed somebody. But by the spirit of the law, you're guiltless, right? Because you loved your fellow man by lying to the Nazis to protect the Jews, and you... Be, killed the man to protect the weak and innocent, your family, right? You did what Jesus did. Jesus says to love others as he loved you. And what did Jesus do to love you? He became sin for you. So he wants you to love others in the same way, where you, if you have to condemn yourself according to the letter of the law, you do so in order to, to protect and save others. You become the evil in order to do so. Right? The letter of the law condemns you for that. The spirit of the law doesn't, right? And I know some people who are like uh, Seventh-day Adventists, and they think guns are wrong, right? And they're very hardcore about stuff like that, like not to do anything to anybody. And it's kind of like, well, I can just break into your home and do whatever I wanted to you then. You just admitted that you're not going to do anything and you have no defense. The spirit of the law doesn't condemn you for doing such a thing to protect yourself and others from not necessarily yourself so much but definitely protect others right to give yourself for them you're following the spirit of the law and this is what god wanted he wanted love not servitude so leah and rachel represent that this is the first covenant at mount sinai this is the new covenant that's what it represents here there's no Jew or Gentile. Here there's a separation. And it brings uh, a bit of arrogance and selfishness because when you're under the law, you will do things like that, like not lie and not uh, kill somebody who's going to kill your family because you don't want to become a sinner yourself and condemn yourself. So you become selfish. You're looking about yourself, right? And you think you're better than others because you're part of this, this covenant, right? And... It puffs you up. Like, uh, oh, I'm part of Israel. I'm better than the Gentiles, these dogs and these pigs. Right? Well, here it's inclusive. Anybody can become part of the church, the bride of Christ. This is what God wanted. Right? So, why these Christians see it as the other way around makes no sense to me. A matter of fact... I, I see it in another way, just to quickly wrap up this video here, is that Leah, being Israel, actually represents heaven, the angels, how things were uh, to be with them, right? And the church here represents all of mankind, Leah, Rachel over here. And this is what God wanted, right? He didn't want this servitude he wanted to love. Right? So, 
Yeah. Uh, so if we're going to put this, oh, Israel versus Gentiles, no, 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 because the church is made up of Israel and the Gentiles. It's not, uh, oh, we're better than them. It's like, no, let's all join. Uh, not just to join in, you know, ecumenicalism, but uh, to believe the gospel, to become part of the church, and to be saved. All right, because the letter of the law cannot save you. Uh, but uh, with that being said, uh, you know, I hope what I said makes sense. I've been trying to see it through the other way around, and I can't. I actually did a comment to uh, the Repo Man 64. I think it's 64. It might be 65, but I think it's 64. Uh, he said it in passing in one of his videos. So I said, well, how do you see it that way? And he said, oh, because the church is written in the Book of Life first, and Israel comes second. And I was like, all right, but I don't, you know, I get what you're saying there, but I don't see it that way. Uh, that We didn't continue with that conversation, but uh, that was just an example of some of these people who see it this way, and I just don't get it. Right? There might be some little thing, like he said, oh, the church has written the book of life first. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Moses talked about these people being in the book of life, Israel. So, uh, I'm not quite sure if that fits, but I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to force it on people. I'm just going to share how I see things, and uh, yeah, you can take it for what it is, you know? Thanks for watching, and take care.